Namaste everybody. How are you? Well, I'm super excited and super humble today as I sit with OAM Tara Rajkumar, the very first woman of Indian origin to have received the coveted title OAM, the Order of Australia Medal. Her work over the last 50 years, spanning across continents, have been so awe-inspiring that Empro TV, in collaboration with We Belong, is doing a documentary on her life titled Tara the Singing Anklet. It is so wonderful to have you at the uh, studios of Empro TV today, Taraji. Thank you so much for coming once again. Thank you. Thank you, M4, for inviting me, Shama. Your story has always fascinated me. You know, when I think about this young girl who was raised in the capital city in India, in post-independent India, where Bharat Natyam was gaining all the momentum, there was this girl who was fascinated by Kathakali and Mohaniyattam. That's about you. How was this Delhi-born, Delhi-raised girl so fascinated by, uh, you know, f by the land that she came from, which is Kerala? Well, um, you know, I'm one of those kids who, uh, though born in Kerala, is brought up in different parts of the country and especially the capital. Mm -hmm. But I had um, a wonderful upbringing, which, can, you know, it, it was very strong in its Kerala culture. And uh, though a lot of my life was spent in Delhi, mm -hmm. my early years were in Kerala, just uh, Im imbibing the entire arts scene there, not because, you know, I was too little. Yeah. So it's not because I did anything. It's just because my family, especially my father. My father was well known in the arts world of Kerala. Mm -hmm. He was Sri TMB Nadungadi. So I was really Tara Nadungadi mm -hmm. until I got married and went away from India. So he himself was uh, very involved in reviving Kathakali. He had worked with Mahakavi Vallathol, mm -hmm. who he, he is the one who set up the Kalamandalam, Kerala Kalamandalam. He was a poet himself, poet laureate of Kerala. Mm -hmm. And my father worked with him in his very young days. And he brought that intense Kerala culture and the arts into his family. And as the eldest daughter, I think he focused on me for a very long time uh, because my sister was born many years later. And by the time I was four and a half, I found myself learning Kathakali. You know, it, I, I loved dancing and I demonstrated that interest. But at that age, you don't decide whether you want Bharat Natyam or Kathakali or anything else. Yeah. And instead of doing I was doing you know, yes, the Kathakali yes, equivalent. Yes. And um, by the time I reached Delhi, I was fortunate to have had exceptional training, mm -hmm. exceptional training in Kathakali. Mm -hmm. It was a very strong Kathakali focus. And through that Kathakali, I was introduced to the literature, the language, the culture, the history the uh, cultural history, um, all extremely important in the development of an artist. Absolutely. I didn't realize it, but I was fortunate to have had the best of gurus possible in Kathakali. So I think th that was an asset that, uh, that came to me and I'm very grateful for. <laughs> it's, it's very empowering when you have a very strong uh, cultural um, a sense uh, in your upbringing and it actually empowers you to be the person who you really are reflect on your culture it, that is that is very true you know um, I never realized it but I took it for granted the knowledge that I had in me I had absorbed you know when you're a child you're like a sponge you just soak in all that's around you 
And I had this, you know, we practice Kathakali till one o'clock at night, right. go to the school in the morning, perform. And it was a time when you didn't talk about it. You danced really well, your mother might say. Mm -hmm. Oh, your father would be delighted. But then no one made a big deal about it. You know, you're, you're learning, you're growing. I just look back and think of today, mm -hmm. where every day people take pictures of themselves, mm -hmm. dress up <laughs> and put on the Facebook or any other media. And it's, it's just a different way of Projecting looking at you, you yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You were continuously told, grow, don't worry about your image or anything like that. Absorb, learn and become. And that empowerment, mm -hmm. especially in that post-colonial, early post-colonial mm. colonial times, mm. was very, very important. Yeah. Because then you were made to believe that you're not the most important person. Yeah. It's the art form. Mm -hmm. And you are reviving it and you are a vehicle mm -hmm. to make this happen in this new world that India is moving into. You know, we've just come out of 200 years of repression. Right. And these are art forms which had gone dormant. And that empowerment that I felt when I went to Delhi, where I performed in Delhi, it was not so obvious. But later when I went on to London and to Australia, I could talk with a, a certain um, knowledge, you know, that I took for granted. I mean, it was there. Mm -hmm. So speaking about it, was not difficult. Well, I think that is one thing that this uh, that Kathakali was very fortunate about. Uh, Kathakali was not much tarnished by the uh, colonial rule, uh, just like the yeah. other Indian art forms were so penalized and so uh, subjected to stigma. Kathakali was, you know, probably not having the Devadasi Samradaya. Uh, stood away from that. Do you think that uh, that made an impact on you, like to understand your uh, culture? Yes, yes. I think um, because I went into Mohiniyattam at a slightly later stage, mm -hmm. I started early with Kathakali. What, I, what was different with me is that any girl at that time who was learning classical dance learned Bharatanatyam. Yeah. And here was me who, who learned an art form which is performed by men. Yeah. And it never made a difference to me because at that time you don't ask these questions. Right. When you're five, six, seven, eight, nine, I was learning with one of the greatest gurus for Kathakali by the time I was nine and ten. And you know, the, the most sought after guru of the time, Kalamandla Krishnanayar. And he was like a father figure. He came, he taught me with so much affection. And I was fortunate that I was able to keep up that connection with him into Britain and for a very long time because he was a very internationally renowned performing artist and he was sent by the government of India to Britain and to Europe again and again and I had the fortune to work with him in some small way or the other. So this line of Kathakali gave me the strength for example, I'll tell you, before moving into the Devadasi or the Ekahara younger style, mm -hmm. what Kathakali gave me was the best of Kerala. What is, what is it that Kerala has given the world? Abhinaya. Mm -hmm. You know, the capacity to communicate with your face and with your hands, your body, and create a language so that you can communicate non-verbally uh, to any community. And that was my strength, I felt, because um, Abhinaya is the one thing that stands out from any other serious classical art form of the world and that we from Kerala have given it. You know, it is our right. Kohinoor yeah. diamond <laughs> to the world. Yeah, the, yeah. Ar the art. <laughs> That's right. So when I moved into Mohiniyattam, mm -hmm. by that time, you see, this is, this is a fact. My father and I could talk to each other across the room. Mm -hmm. 
without words. I had enough hand gestures yeah, to communicate, to communicate yeah. and I had a family background where that was nothing new. I mean, it was not, all right, it's different. Not all my cousins went around doing hand gestures <laughs> to each other. But it was quite normal. But it was a street. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So then when I moved into Dasi Atam and the revival of Mohini Atam, this was a strength that I had. Mm -hmm. And the greatest strength was, I used to go to Ashan's house in Ernakulam, mm -hmm. uh, Tripunitra, Tripunitra, and he always used to sit on the upper floor, first floor of their house, mm -hmm. learn Abhinaya. Mm -hmm. And there was this great guru for Mohini Atam downstairs, mm -hmm. Kalyali Kutima teacher, who was like the guru's wife, mm -hmm. yeah. and family who were very welcoming. Yes. And my mother said, do you know she has got a a precious art form with her. Mm -hmm. You should think of learning. And that's how I went to her. And it was whatever she had so generously passed on to me. And I was, I'm truly honored and grateful that I had that opportunity. As the founder and director of Narti Sudha, uh, your company has used just the vocabulary of Kathakali and Mohini Atam to create sold out shows um, at venues that artists, um, uh, ethnic artists in Melbourne can only dream of these days. Uh, tell us a bit about that journey. How, how did you develop that content? It's a long process. To get to that stage, there is a lot of research and development involved. Because um, as I was saying, the initial studying of the repertoire and then developing next stage of repertoire, I had the opportunity to learn the Kalamandalam Shaili mm -hmm. as well. And then I went on to research. As you go every decade, there are new people adding facets. Yes. And um, into the next decade, while I was in England, and then when I came to Australia, I realized that there were new movements coming. You know, mm -hmm. The initial influence was uh, Dr. Kanakrile from Bombay came, she added her Rabinaya was amazing and initial negativity started to reduce because mm -hmm. otherwise um, the trend from Kerala was to say don't do this, don't do that yes, they were rather than add about this or add to that. <laughs> you know, everyone was too worried about adding anything at all. In right. the end it became so little the content that you can't stand on that, you know, it <laughs> cannot become a full-fledged classical style. So then, in the next phase, uh, Sri Khavalam Narayana Panikir brought a huge new facet yes. with the whole Kerala traditions being looked at. Because Mohini Atam in its origin is from Dasi Atam, yes. and which has a Karnataka base, yes. Carnatic style of music, yep. and the repertoire is in a Carnatic style. Yes. So from there, we are now getting a new, fa a whole new, uh, development mm -hmm. which was highlighted by Bharati Shivaji in her work mm -hmm. and further down with the younger generation that is coming up and fortunately for me with the work that I did in Australia I was able to get fellowships from the Australia Council which was a one-off first again and I went and did research on the Edekya as a an instrument and the Vaitaris and the because each classical style has its own specific uh, signature instrument. Like Bharatnatyam has Murdangam, Odissi has the Pakhavaj, mm -hmm. or the Tabla for Kathak. Mm -hmm. We have the Edekya, mm -hmm. which gives it a, an identity. Yes. And I worked on that side over a good 10 years to develop the next stage of my repertoire, adding on new items which were based on the Edeka verbal notations mm -hmm. and uh, an, an increased Kerala content coming into it. So by the time I was doing productions, mm -hmm. I had this increased number of items from Mohini mm -hmm. as well as Kathakali, mm -hmm. plus uh, the theatricality that is required uh, to take it to a an Australian audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I feel I'm the uh, need to 
contribute to the mainstream society when you move into a new country mm. is very important. You have to communicate. I feel communication is the key word. You communicate with your body, with your music, with your words, with your language. Mm -hmm. So I try to do all these. And also I felt it was necessary to move into educational institutions mm -hmm. where art form is looked at seriously. Right. Not just as um, a visual entertainment, mm -hmm. but also as a study of a cultural development. Right. Both these together gave me a step into the echelons of Australian society, like the art centers and the universities, mm -hmm. especially Monash University. Right, I was fortunate um, to have uh, seen your student Dharani's Arangetram. And while there were traditional choreographies, uh, like what you just spoke about, uh, bringing in contemporary themes um, was a refreshing take on the entire repertoire. I noticed how uh, you, you've used various Indian languages uh, to, you know, to create the repertoire that you did for your student. Um, apart from the uh, use of languages, the use of contemporary themes about uh, um, st uh, things about women empowerment through Bharatiya's work uh, was beautiful. It was it, very refreshing how you know such a work was chosen and how you developed that kind of uh, 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 awakening piece for a arangetram like this. Could you elaborate on it? Well, um, um, talking of different languages. Um, it is important to have that Kerala content. Yes. But at the same time, we have to extend the boundaries by making Mohiniyatam a complete art form with its language, which can cover any spoken language. It doesn't matter. Right. You know, whether, uh, for, all right, let me take an example of the great poet King Swati Tirumal. He's all right, now so he languages. is composed in Sanskrit and in Mani Pravalam, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't stop calling him a Kerala poet Never. <laughs> because he has composed in Hindi uh -huh. and in so many other languages. Mm -hmm. It added to his capacity, knowledge and his amazing vision. Right. And similarly, if we want to put Mohini Artam on the world stage, we need to expand, keep within the boundaries of the classical style adhere to the norms which make it Mohiniyata. How is it different from Bharatanatyam or Odissi? How is it exciting? What is it that can appeal to the audience? If we just say move in circles and slow <laughs> movement, and you will find that the rows of audiences will decrease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll have, you know, if you don't have an audience, the art form ceases to exist eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. we have to have a balance. And in this particular case, every time someone has done an Arangetam from my school, mm -hmm. if they've requested for a piece from their language, mother tongue. mother tongue, I've said yes. Dharani is born and brought up in Australia, but the parents, mother comes from a uh, very cultured background and Tamil background. Mm -hmm. And she requested this rec women's empowerment piece mm -hmm. of Bharati years. And I thought, how challenging, how beautiful how, it yet was so too. exciting. Yes. Why? Because it's called Kumiri. Yes, and eh? that is Na, very well attributed to the Malay. <laughs> Kumiri. And yeah. I thought, it is wonderful to rejoice in the gains, hard fought gains mm -hmm. that women have made over the years. And for me, what excited me was that to link it to a celebratory kumi. Yes. Kerala kumi Kerala is kumi. famous. <laughs> Kathakali has kumi. Yes. The kumi folk dance of Kerala is so well known. Yes. And I have done so many ubis kumi. and so many characters as well as just as kumi. Mm -hmm. So for me, that became a pure dance vehicle within Mohini Atom. Mm -hmm. And the Abhinaya is so absolutely chock, you know, <laughs> just perfect. Yeah, spot on, yes. Yeah, spot on. And 
dramatic enough mm -hmm. to keep the audience interested. Yes, yes. It was so captivating to <laughs> watch that piece <laughs> Thank unfold. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Taraji, um, Dharani's was the was your 25th Arangetram. It was a sort of a landmark event as well. You connecting back to Monash University uh, from where you started. Uh, could you elaborate on this connection with Monash and sure. developing? Sure. Uh, you know, when I came from London, mm -hmm. I came to do a tour of Australia. Yes. I came with a fairly big name from London. Yes. And so it was organized by Dance Umbrella of Britain. Mm -hmm. And I performed at the Opera House, Sydney Opera House, at the Art Centre. I was the first Indian dancer to perform in the concert hall of the Art Centre in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And two sold out performances for the opening of the Ari mm -hmm. the Art Centre in Alice Springs. Mm -hmm. So all in all, it was a fantastic introduction. And um, you know, so it gave me a big opening into the mainstream Australian audience. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, as part of this tour, I did a number, number of lecture demonstrations, and one of them was Monash University. Ah. And I gave a lecture demonstration there, and fortunately, they had an amazing head of the department called Professor Margaret Kartomi, mm -hmm. a gem of a person, um, you know, it was not long before that that Australia was uh, still uh, all white Australia policy happening in this country. So Margaret was one of those few people who had done a lot of research into Southeast Asian music and one of the departments that was developing under her leadership was the South Asian department headed by an amazing American, mm -hmm. Dr. Reese Flora. They were both so very supportive mm -hmm. of what I was doing. I was invited to develop performance work. And soon after that, I had my classes happening there. And I developed a course which was offered at uh, undergraduate level mm -hmm. called New Dance from Old Cultures. Old cultures. Mm -hmm. And it was offered to as a part of the engineering degree, mm -hmm. engineering and arts degree. So it was a breadth subject. Yes, yes. yes. and. Um, that was an amazing journey at Monash. And the first Arangetam I did there was Nitya Gopu, um, herself an Iyengar girl, uh, after the research I had done going back to Kerala. And that research paper was presented through Monash Department of Music, the development of this new facet in Mohiniyattam, as well as uh, looking at contemporary theatre. Mm -hmm. I worked with a theatre director mm -hmm. and um, presented a piece called Malaki. Mm -hmm. That's another story yes, there altogether. Yes, I've heard about Malaki. Yes, yes. and um, <laughs> presented that with no other than Padma Bhushan, Sonal Man Singh. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. did a double bill. She did Draupati and I did uh, Malaki. Mm -hmm. Very well reviewed and we had this tremendous response. So I was able to develop all that and then, you know, th there are pendulum swings always. And then there was a time when there was not much Asian stuff in, at Monash. Mm -hmm. And happily today, mm -hmm. it is, I think, swing, swinging back. And by the time the Dar this Arangetam of Dharanese was happening, I was being invited back and being recognized by the um, Indian Performing Arts Convention, along with the Performing Arts Department headed by Tom mm -hmm. um, Guthridge, which was very heartening. Mm -hmm. And um, they auspiced this Arangetam after such a long time. And I'm so uh, really happy and uh, ha gra grateful that a university is thinking back, yes. that we, they can bring back uh, non -stream, mainstream content and develop it. So Absolutely. I look Tanji forward to the future with yes. people like you. <laughs> it is in fact so awe-inspiring to see your journey, to understand that art um, with the right, right understanding and essence of your, uh, of your culture, art evolves and you have to let that happen in order yeah. to grow and yes. branch out. Yes. And uh, your, your life story, the way you have taken it and you know, still keeping on uh, to the roots, still staying firm to the roots, 
yet branching out so beautifully into various continents. It's such an inspiring story for artists around the world. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thank you. Today Delighted to be here with you, <laughs> with you young people. It's so exciting to see your new generation bringing so much of these art forms in this uh, new era, which I but I just have a cautionary few words because the present uh, artists who are coming, they're very highly trained, well educated, and they've got the Google at their fingertips. Um, <laughs> which not is only in Australia, which can be dangerous <laughs> at times. <laughs> not only in Australia, I see this trend in America and in Canada, where, wherever the migration is happening, the migrant new generation have a tendency to take the art form. And unlike my time, they have a ready large Indian migrant group to support them. Right. You see, this was not there when I came. Yes. Came with a name as a performing artist. You are coming as young artists with wonderful futures. And what is happening is the Indian migrant second generation it is giving yeah, you enough fodder. Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> and you are performing in the temples, the children, hundreds of students. It's amazing. But one has to be very careful not to get to, not to become, what shall I say, very happy within what you are doing. Yes, and to expand. And not expand and stop communicating to the mainstream. Yes. Because yes. then you stop with performing for your own school, your, your own community. Within the cultural bubble your within co a exactly. multicultural society. Exactly. Cultural bubble within multicultural society. Yes. I like that. <laughs> I like that phrase. <laughs> Yes, but other than that, so many opportunities wait. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you.